All right, guys, let's talk about the cost of borrow rates for AMC stock that are absolutely exploding here today and why the markets are up and why AMC stock is down because, I mean, there's a lot we need to get into. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below. You guys know the deal. Get your free stock. If you guys want to trade with me live in real time, link down below in the pinned comment. Thank you for tuning in here today. So first and foremost, quick recap on what is happening today in the markets. The markets are currently hitting a new high of the day. S&P up about 2.61%. We were hit with a double whammy of good news. We got the Fed Bank stress test results that came out about 30 minutes after the bell uh, yesterday. That was around 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. And that really didn't cause a move to after hours. It We kind of went down, if anything. And then markets finally realized, hey, this is a good thing. And we gapped up as soon as pre-market trading did start. You guys can see a literal gap up here. We were holding this range. And then we started to open. It was pretty bullish. Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey did come out. And that showed that consumers expect inflation to tick downwards. And that's where you got these two, uh, two or three uh, big candles and then we've held that range and continue to ever so slightly trend to the upside and that's what's happening into the close of the day here today obviously it, it might be a little bit different by the time you guys watch this video but nonetheless it's still going to be a very substantially green day uh, when all things are said and done and this five percent five to ten percent rally that i have been talking about from the bottom is firmly coming to fruition at the current moment we are up about seven percent from the bottom as of right now so we're almost in the middle of five and ten percent but given what's happening right now it looks like we'll probably go 10 to 15 percent from the bottom we hit that trade on the head if you guys want to as well link down below in the pinned comment like i said come join the group prices will be going up here at midnight i actually said it, they were going to go up yesterday at midnight but i just did not get a chance uh to do that so that will be happening tonight so i guess you get one extra day if you guys want to be part of it to come join for a cheaper cost and lock in that rate for the rest of your life but nonetheless that is what is bullish and really i think we'll be bullish until we get a reason to not be bullish considering we've fallen so much uh you know nasdaq still down close to 30 percent. i believe it's around 26 and a half percent still as of right now for the first six months of 2022 which is just a terrible terrible return now on monday you have durable goods orders that comes out 7 30 in the morning that can move the markets but i'm not convinced that it will pending home sales dallas fed manufacturing uh index don't expect these to be anything uh too important goods trade balance that's for may retail inventories for may uh which is just estimating um the numbers uh nothing crazy for tuesday wednesday um nothing too crazy as well i mean you do have uh the gdp price index quarter over quarter the final numbers for q1 pce price is the final numbers uh real consumer spending q1 final numbers pce numbers um but again nothing that is substantial now on thursday you do have Personal income month over month for May. Personal spending month over month for May. PCE price index uh, year over year, month over month. And those are expected to be high volatility catal catalyst events. Initial jobless claims, core PCE prices, a couple other smaller data points. But I think Thursday, that's going to be the day where you might see a change in sentiment depending on how those personal income and personal spending numbers uh, do come in. And then on Friday, that's definitely going to be uh, probably the most important catalyst and that is ism manufacturing uh pmi so i think the beginning of next week is probably going to be uh pretty bullish you're probably going to see a continued uh, upward move until we get new data which could either scare the markets or um you know make the markets even more bullish now as far as amc stock for the day this is the main uh meat and bones meat and potatoes whatever you want to call it of this video cost to borrow max now at 49.41%, this is a massive jump for the day. As you can see, the availability of shares is sitting at zero. So the cost of borrow rate going up like that is not a big surpriser, but given what we're seeing in the actual price of the stock, you're flat on the day. It's essentially at $12.04, down 0.08%. Cost of borrow numbers jumping up like this, uh, 
cost bar average at 24 and a half percent cost bar minimum at 15.66 percent is definitely something that is very different and unusual and now amc is starting to make a little bit of a move to the upside but these cost borrow rates you're you're at basically 50 percent that's uh getting very very high if you want to get your hands on shares it is not cheap and if you still have shares out on loan that have not been sold short yet or even if you have a short position out there it's becoming much more expensive very very quickly over the last couple of weeks the cost to borrow rate has this cost borrow max i should say has went up hundreds of percentage points so it's not cheap to stay in those positions for in a a long period of time when the stock is already beaten into the ground and when it looks like it's holding up very very well it just does not make all too much sense uh then again hedge funds really don't know what they're doing when it comes down to it. that's why retail investors over the past two years have outperformed hedge funds by a very large degree now ortex estimated short interest of free flow 22.51 percent short interest of free flow at uh or free flow out on loan they change this up so it's very uh different now but it's sitting at 37.15 percent shares out on loan 191.48 million 3.73 days to cover so that is still very good cost to borrow rate says right here 15.25 percent 100 percent share utilization as well now as far as the option activity is concerned you're seeing a lot of very bearish option activity option orders a lot of bad option activity coming through on the option chain in the beginning of the day if you guys seen the first video i put out we were 100 percent positive with about sixty thousand dollars worth of bullish options well that's not the case now and that's why the stock is was negative i mean it, it's positive now but it's going back and forth between positive and negative well you have a july 15th 20 dollar put worth 2.51 million dollars that's going to outweigh 61,000 to the call side every single day and 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 that's going to cause a lot of market maker shorts to have to go out and hit the markets to oblige for all of these put options so not a good situation uh and it kind of goes to show as well even if you look at the price action earlier amc was up you know two to four percent for most of the day these option orders come in over the last hour 15 minutes and what has happened with the price of amc well you went negative it's very obvious uh to see at this current moment now another july 15 13 dollar put coming through for fifty six thousand dollars so more bearish option activity but these two million you know two and a half million dollar orders there's no choice but to move the stock down as a market maker you have to go out and short stock to make sure that you don't lose money on that trade and essentially that's what is happening and that's why options are controlling what is happening with the price of amc more than anything else now if we take a look at the stonko tracker data uh you're looking at 430,000 calls that are out of the money 11,500 calls that are currently in the money 90,000 puts that are out that are in the money and 87,000 puts that are currently out of the money you know it's going to be important what happens july 15th but i think even over the next couple of weeks you can still see uh, a gamma squeeze just based off of all of the option activity for july 15th so i don't necessarily think it has to be the week of july 15th to see a big move up but uh you know then again we've seen weirder things and it could happen at any time given how cheap uh, the premiums are on the whole entire option chain at this point for AMC. Kind of ridiculous. There, There is a very good trade to be made once AMC does start to actually make a move up. Now, the last thing that I really want to talk about here in this video, besides just uh this, the consumer sentiment survey, which is pretty straightforward. It was overall bad. Like, if you were to look at this in 2020 or 2021, you would say, wow, that is not good basically the same thing consumers are very pessimistic over the whole entire economy but this is the part that made markets very bullish so it says the university of michigan's uh surveys of consumers said consumers expect inflation to rise at a 5.3 percent annualized rate as of the end of june so 5.3 percent we're currently at an 8.6 percent inflation rate that is good that is what over three percent lower so a positive thing the markets are taking it 
positively and if you guys are unaware of the bank stress test uh, basically saying that the banks can withstand 10% unemployment can withstand 55% stock price drop 40% drop to commercial uh, real estate and um, about a hundred billion dollars of trading losses as well as 450 billion dollars in loan losses uh, equaling out to 612 uh, billion dollars of potential losses the banks theoretically would be okay so that's a good thing for the markets i doubt actually if if they would be okay i think there would be a lot of problems if that economic scenario actually were to play out for an extended period of time but hey what do i know we'll see we'll see if it happens we could definitely get the stock market down 55 percent though that wouldn't be too crazy and speaking of that this is the last thing that we need to talk about when the stock market is actually uh going to fall and uh, potentially when a lot of those puts could make you guys a lot of money and i will firmly sit here and say that july 28th is probably going to be that time period and you do have the fed meeting on july 27th where the fed is going to raise rates likely by 50 basis points if not more than that if the markets start to price that in right now we're only expecting that half percent rate hike but that happens the 27th we get advanced estimates for q2 gdp on july 28th so if we go into a recession, inflation is still very high. Nothing as far as that has changed. The markets are going to realize in a very short amount of time, the Fed is raising rates as we are in a recession, that the Fed's hand is basically tied there. Uh, at the same time, you have quantitative tightening. At the same time, you have global conflicts, everything else going on in the world that is not good that's where the markets freak out that's where you see new lows and that's where in my opinion you set the bottom and you can actually start to make an upward trajectory through the months of uh, potentially end of august you know september october november that's where it could get a little bit better than not even considering we have midterms but we still have new lows to hit and probably down to 320 330 on the s p 500 that's really where i'm targeting the pre-covid peak and i think think the higher we go the better the trade will be to the downside so let me know your thoughts on all of that information specifically when do you think the markets are going to bottom and when do you think this um you know flush out event is actually going to be thank you for watching i will see you in the next one